I'm at Vision 6's Email Marketing Summit Australia and one of the keynotes was Kate Vale from Spotify Australia. So I took the opportunity to sit down and have a chat with her given that she's got so much experience having led Google and YouTube both here in Australia and is now running Spotify. Well, Kate, thank you for joining us today. Um, you've just spoken about Spotify. Of course, you're the Australian Managing Director. For people who aren't aware of Spotify, can you talk us through what Spotify is and just give us a very quick timeline of growth? Sure. So Spotify is an application that you download to either your mobile or your, um, your tablet or your computer and you can listen to music instantaneously. There's up to 20 million tracks on the service, so pretty much anything that you want to listen to, you can listen to pretty much straight away. Um, but it's a little bit different to uh, having the, the, the tracks on your phone or on your laptop. It's not about ownership, it's more about access and having access to those tracks or that music whenever you want. Um, the best thing about it is that you can set up your own music hub, um, your own playlists, you can share music with your friends, you can see what your friends are listening to, um, and there's all sorts of different ways to discover music on the platform. Um, you mentioned in the presentation, um, you know, and we're here at EMSA, the Email Marketing Summit hosted by Vision 6, you mentioned in that presentation that you actually have an extraordinarily high conversion rate for a freemium product. Mm -hmm. Freemium being, you know, you offer it for free for first and then hope to convert some of those to yes. paying customers. Can you tell us about those statistics and how you have got such a high conversion rate? Sure. So uh, Spotify, as you said, is a freemium service. There's two ways in which you can sign up for Spotify. One is for free and that's around about 70% of Spotify's total user base. And the way we monetize that tier is through advertising. Uh, and the other way you can sign up is through our premium subscription, which in Australia is $11.99 a month. Uh, and essentially just make Spotify a, a better experience, better listening quality. Um, you're able to have playlists on your mobile device pushed to offline, which doesn't eat into data. Um, and you, you don't hear any ads. Uh, yes, we do have an in incredibly high conversion to premium and I think that speaks in volumes about our business and what we're all about. The fact that um, you know, it, it isn't a, a, an excessive cost, it's the right price for this market. Um, $12 a month for pretty much any music you want and being able to do what you want with that music is, is pretty amazing. Um, and I guess we, we have the free tier and we're, we're, we want that free tier so that we can convert people into premium. In fact, it's our biggest converting area. Once people come on, they try Spotify, they're not paying for it, they give it a go. They generally do convert over time. What are some of the um, specific strategies you've used to encourage people to convert? You know, because I, I can imagine that there are some people like me who kind of said, yeah, okay, I've had enough of the ads, so I just want to upgrade. But yep. what are the other kind of prompter strategies you use? Well, we generally do convert people through our own advertising. Yep. And that might be, say, for example, house ads on Spotify. So um, we know that they've been using Spotify for a while. We know that they're starting to set up playlists. They're getting more engaged in the platform. So we try and get to them at a point in time where we think they're going to convert and explain the benefits of, of premium to them. Um, it's not not a hard it's sell. Not a hard sell. Say. Yeah, that's beautiful. Make the product so good. One of the other things I love about Spotify is how it uses the recommendation engine. You know, when we first saw recommendation engines come a big way with Amazon, where we basically said, you know, other people who read this book also like this, and that's yep. exactly how I get fed a lot of my music. Yep. Um, apart from just feeding up the music that you think I'll like, which mm -hmm. nine times out of ten you're spot on, how else are you using that data? Particularly, I'm thinking in selling ads and to other third-party providers? Yep, sure. So as you said, um, the recommendation engine is pretty amazing. Um, we have 40 million people using our service around the globe now, active users. Uh, so that gives us a lot of data to use to improve our service. Yeah. So whether that's recommending different music to people, we generally know, we know who you are. Um, we know where you live even though we don't know you as a person, Kat, we know a lot about you. So um, we know who your friends are, we know what music they like, we know your location. So there's a whole lot of, uh, about you that, we, that helps us decide or determine what kind of music to recommend to you. But we also acquired a company called The Echo Nest a few months back, mm -hmm. and they're a music data business. And the insights which they have given us um, are incredible and improving our recommendation services all the time. There's many ways in which you can discover music. We realise that people, they come to Spotify, 20 million tracks there, and sometimes that can be a little bit daunting. Yep. Um, so we, we understand that sometimes people want to be told or they want to be helped along on, on what to use. So um, we've got an incredible engine called Browse. 
So we know that, uh, for example, it's a Sunday morning, people might want a bit of a chill out playlist. So we'll recommend when they log into Spotify, a bunch of kind of chill out or Sunday morning type tunes, which might differ to Friday night when we know that you're probably wanting to have a drink and a bit of a party and we'll recommend yeah. different sorts of playlists. Um, and we also know that, uh, say, early in the morning that people might be wanting to work out and we'll, rec we'll recommend workout playlists for you. Um, but also there's Spotify radio, mm -hmm. so you can choose a, a track or an artist and uh, tell us that you want to listen to songs like that. Yeah. And it's the most amazing way to set up radio stations for yourself because the more you tell us, the more we learn about you. So if you thumbs up and thumbs down tracks, we kind of get a feeling for what you like and we'll only recommend songs that are relevant to you. One of the things I find fascinating about disruptive business models and disruptors like you know, Spotify or Uber or Airbnb is that they're often criticised for damaging the previous business model. Yes. In the music case, can you speak into how Spotify is actually supporting the industry as opposed mm -hmm. to taking away from? Sure. So Spotify sees that our major competition is piracy. Um, we have a huge millennial um, following on Spotify. These people have never downloaded music before. They've been pirates. Right. Australia is one of the biggest pirating companies, not only for music but film and TV, in the world. We pirate a lot. Um, those millennials don't actually understand that they're doing anything wrong. But when a free or a very well-priced legal alternative comes into play for them that gives them a better experience, chances are they're going to try that. Spotify's business model is that 70% of everything that we bring in, so whether that be in ad revenue or whether that be in subscription revenue, goes straight back to the labels who then in turn remunerate the artists. And that's our business model. So the more people that are on Spotify, the more people that are listening, the more goes back to the industry. Nice. Um, and in fact, we've contributed a billion dollars to the industry so far since our inception in 2008. Um, but we're set to deliver a billion dollars just this year alone. So it gives you an idea of how quickly we've grown. Entrepreneurs and particularly Brisbane based startup um, guys, they often want to be the next disruptor. They want to be the next Uber, the next Airbnb. What, are some of the, what would be your advice to those entrepreneurs who do want to literally change, fundamentally change a business model or an industry? I've worked at two pretty incredible startups. One was Google. Um, and I actually worked, was lucky enough to work on YouTube there as well, so yep. three in effect, and Spotify. The things that they have in common is that they have completely revolutionised the way people have done things before. Yep. So there has to be a gap in the market, there has to be something that's not working, um, and the ability to completely change that. There's probably so many entrepreneurs out there that think they're finding gaps, but really they're not as big, uh, not, such, not such a grand idea. Um, so, God, if, if Brisbane people could bring the fantastic weather that they've got here down to Sydney, that's, that's an incredible opportunity and very entrepreneurial. <laughs> Let's work on that. Yeah. Let's see how, what we can do that. Kate Vale from Spotify, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kat. Thanks for having me.